This is the Gep RC Rocket Light. It is a bind and fly quad with a Cadex Vista DJI system in it. And today I'm going to take it from whoosh, literally out of the box to into the air and show you the steps that it takes to set it up. I'm Joshua Bardwell and you're going to learn something today. You know, folks, every time I review a quadcopter, I try to do a setup video for it in case this is your first quad and you've never set one up before and you got to figure out, like, you don't just take it out of the box, plug the battery in and go fly it. It's never quite that simple, is it? But the good news is that with these DJI quads, it is a lot simpler than with some of the other quads because so many of the choices have sort of been locked down for you. The receiver is just the Vista, the controller is just the DJI controller. The goggles are the DJI goggles. And because everybody's going to be using the same gear, it does make these a little simpler to set up. So let's do it. And the first thing I want to show you is that I have put this little magnetic right angle adapter onto the USB plug of the, let's see, that is the Vista USB plug, the USB-C. There's also a USB here for the flight controller and I'm probably going to do that one too. And the reason for that is that with these prop guards on, it is pretty hard to get a USB plugged in here without like accidentally damaging it. And these right angle ones, here's how they work. You just got this thing here and it just goes zoop, just like that and snaps on very easily. And when you're done, boop, it comes off very easily. There's a link in the video description to these. Uh, if you want to pick up some of these, I think there's, I don't use them on all my quads because I just like to have a standard USB cable. But for these um, Cinewhoop style quads where the ducts get in the way of the USB plug, it is so easy to break the USB plug by accident trying to get a cable plugged in. And I think they're well worth doing. By the way, some people think that these can only be used to charge. They can't be used to pass data. Obviously, I've tested that. This one passes data. That's old news. So link in the video description to those. So we're going to start by plugging in the Cadex Vista um, the DJI unit and we'll do the DJI registration and firmware update first. And the app that you're going to use to do that is the DJI Assistant 2. There are about a zillion different DJI apps, so it can be a little confusing which one you want. There's a link to it down in the video description uh, if you don't already have it downloaded. We're going to need to plug in the battery for it to power up. And then after a minute, we should see DJI FPV Air Unit Lite. We'll click on that. We'll need to activate the device. Definitely have read and agree to all these terms. Oh, yeah. And then having done that, no, I'm not going to do the survey. Having done that, you should always update the firmware on all your DJI devices when you first get them. And they release firmware updates pretty regularly. So I, I might actually end up having to update the firmware on the goggles too, depending on when the last time I actually updated them was. Okay, great. It's done. And we'll go ahead. We'll unplug. And we're going to also unplug the battery and just let that cool down. The Cadex Vista gets super hot. Uh, and while we're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and update the firmware on my uh, controller and my goggles just to make sure they're at the latest. Next thing to do is to bind the air unit to the goggles and the controller. We have to do the goggles first and then the controller. I'm not sure why you have to do it in that order, but if you bind the controller first and then the goggles, it loses the bind to the controller and you have to rebind it. So we're going to plug in the goggles. I'm just using a 4S flight battery. And with the goggles powered up, I'm going to use a poker to push this red button here. And we'll go into binding mode. And we're going to power up. We're going to power up the Cadex. And I believe, okay. The Cadex is going to have a green LED. And I believe this little button right here I'm going to poke it with my finger, not the poker, because it is a little exposed to some electronics. Let's see how that goes. Hmm, the LED goes red. Are the goggles in binding mode? Let's try pushing bind on the goggles again. Oh, there we go. I'm not sure why it... No, oh, now, it's, now it's hooked up. Oh, so we have a green LED on the Vista green LED on the goggle or image in the goggles and then we're going to turn on the controller we're going to press the record button the this button here and the center notch on this little slider all at the same time 
the light will go blue, indicating that's in binding mode, and we'll press the button again on the Vista. And it is bound as well. One of the switches on my controller is apparently set to cause the thing to beep. So, <laughs> next thing I want to do is I want to plug in the flight controller. That's this US micro USB here on the left side of the quad. And I want to just look in Betaflight at the configuration and see what they've given us. And if you've never installed Betaflight Configurator on your computer at all, like because this is your first quad, I've got another video that takes you through the steps you need to download Betaflight Configurator and get the drivers installed. So at this point, you're going to want to go pause this video, go down to the video description, click that link, get Betaflight Configurator installed, and welcome back. And what we want to see is up here in this pull down menu, when we plug in the USB, we should see a new USB port up here. We should see a new USB port up here, but we don't. Oh, there it is. Okay, perfect. Perfect. That's what I was hoping would happen. So you saw we had COM1 and manual selection COM3 appeared when I plugged in USB and now it's disappeared. I see what's happening. When I plug it in from the bottom, it's getting pushed off when I set it down. I'm going to put it in from the top. Yeah. And we'll hit connect. And the main thing I want to do is I want to check number one in the receiver tab. I want to check that the receiver channels are moving correctly. Okay. Shh. I want to check that the receiver channels are moving correctly. I had the arm switch in the arm position. Shush. I'm going to move the throttle. I want to see the throttle channel moving. That's up down on the left stick. Yaw is going to be left right on the left stick. That's correct. Pitch is going to be up down and roll is going to be left right and you probably don't need to double check this yours is probably also correct that's the benefit of buying this bind and fly but i'm just double checking for the sake of the review on most dji controllers the endpoints are going to be set correctly at least on all the ones i've seen where when i lower the throttle all the way down the throttle channel reads around 1000 so if assuming that yours are also correct, which they probably are, I want you to change the stick low threshold to 1010. And what that's going to do is that's going to get rid of just a little bit of dead band at the bottom of the throttle, where normally when you move the throttle, nothing happens until you move it a little more. By, um, by changing that, you have full throttle control. And that's a good thing. We'll hit save there. And the next thing I want to do is go to the modes tab and look at how they've set up the modes. And so we've got arming. We've got push away to arm and pull towards to disarm and we can see the on this left switch here that's fine I like that for angle that's the beeper here they've got where's angle okay so it looks like they've got angle mode on this left switch here that's fine angle and horizon so angles in middle position Horizon is in the down position. Okay, that's acceptable. I'm going to be flying in acro mode most of the time. For, for indoors, you might fly in angle mode. I actually don't recommend that you use horizon mode, to be honest with you. And beeper is aux 3. Which switch is that? It looks like this one is aux 3, and that's the beeper. Up is the beeper, and down is off. I kind of don't like that because the usual standard for most controllers is that having the switches pushed away from you is kind of like the neutral default position. And so in this case, they've got the beeper on when the switch is away from you, right? I'm not a big fan of that. So I'm going to reshuffle this just a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the beeper, I'm going to move this yellow, just click and drag the yellow over to here and hit save. And what that's going to do is it's going to make it so that the beeper is on when the switch is pulled down and the beeper is off when the switch is pushed up. Okay. The only exception to that that I like is the arm switch. I prefer to have the arm switch pulled toward me for disarm and pushed away for arm. I kind of just, that's the way I've always done it. I have a reason why I do it. It's not necessarily a good reason, but that's how I'm going to leave mine set up. Let's just take a quick look around and see what else they've got going on here. They got motors reversed. That's fine. Props out is fine. So I don't think horizon mode is a good idea to learn to fly in. I think it just teaches bad habits and they are missing turtle mode. And turtle mode is what's used to flip the quad over if you crash and you're upside down. And I think everybody should have turtle mode. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to tick hide unused modes so you can see all the modes. 
you're going to delete horizon mode and you're going to go down and find flip over after crash and say add range and we're just going to move this switch which is now it'll fill in aux 2 we're going to put that switch in all the way down position and you'll see this yellow tick mark here shows us where the switch where the channel is we're just going to drag this over to cover that position and hit save and now we'll re-enable hide unused modes. What we've got is flip crash all the way down, angle in the middle, acro all the way up, and I think that's a great way to be. Another thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the configuration tab and right here under the beeper configuration, I'm gonna turn off USB and that's going to stop the damn thing from beeping at me when we're plugged into USB and just working it on the bench. It's really freaking loud beeper and I hate it. Just hit save and reboot on that. All right, one last thing I wanna do, and that is set up the OSD. The DJI goggles can read the on-screen display from the flight controller, and um, I got a really nice OSD setup from the Rotoriot Squirt, the Shenron Squirt that Rotoriot builds. They have a really nice OSD setup that I use on all my DJI quads. I'm gonna show you how to copy paste that in. So this text is gonna be linked in the video description, and I'm just gonna copy that and then I'm gonna to go to the CLI tab and I'm just going to paste that in and hit enter. And then I'm gonna type the word save and it'll save that. You are gonna to need to go into your goggles and turn on the option. Um, I think it's called show external or show custom OSD. Otherwise you won't see that on-screen display information in the goggles. Well, okay, we are now ready to go plug in a battery and fly the darn thing. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, if there's anything I missed or anything you struggled with trying to get this quadcopter in the air, leave it in the comments or just message me directly. You can message me on Facebook Messenger. I don't always see all the YouTube comments because YouTube doesn't always show me comments for the very old, for the older videos. But you can leave a comment down here or if you want to, you can just message me on Facebook Messenger. I do my best to answer as many messages as I try to answer all of them. Don't always succeed. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy flying, everybody.